Uh, all right, everyone. Now I'm going to be talking a little bit about setting RCR boundary conditions for our model over here. These are uh, slight improvements over the basic resistance boundary conditions. Uh, the idea of assigning RCR boundary conditions over resistance boundary conditions is essentially to model the distovascular bed downstream of our uh, 3D model as a elastic compliant vasculature. So uh, usually a resistance boundary condition would just have one single resistor downstream of our 3D model represented over here as a cylinder. Uh, on the other hand, an RCR boundary condition has two extra components, which is a capacitor and another distal resistance. Uh, after that, this uh, three element representation is really commonly used. It's, uh, it's a nice balanced model between accuracy and efficiency in terms of boundary conditions. And the three key uh, parameters that this allows you to play with are the proximal resistance, which is a model of all the large vessel resistance downstream that was clipped off by uh, during the modeling as well as due to imaging limitations. There's a distal vascular compliance that models the overall compliance in uh, the smaller arterioles and distal vascular bed that we aren't able to model directly from the 3D image data. And then the distal vascular resistance, which is represented by this RD over here. So using these three parameters, we, uh, we can set up a really simple model of all the vasculature that we aren't able to see. Um, a couple of key things that this model sets up is that, first of all, if we assume that we had a steady flow going through the model, um, this capacitance over here, which is a direct analog to the electric capacitor in electrical circuits, uh, this capacitor essentially will not function and we just have two, res two resistances in series for a steady flow. So in other words, we can model a total resistance of this RCR circuit as just the sum of this proximal and distal resistor over here. Uh, the other thing to note is for pulsatile flows, this RCR circuit has a characteristic fill time, which basically represents how this uh, distal vascular bed stores and releases flow will depend on a time constant that uh, is a function of this capacitance times this distal resistance. If this value is large, it means that the distal compliance fills slowly. And if this value is small, it means that this distal compliance uh, fills and ejects a lot faster. So it's a lot more responsive. So I'm first of all going to show you how to set up a RCR boundary condition in SimVascular and then give a little more intuition on what an what a RCR boundary condition does, uh, what each of these parameters do. So let's go back to our model over here. And just like we did in a resistance boundary condition, we're going to set up a simulation job. So for that, we right click on the simulation tab, go over here, select the model that we want to set up a simulation job for, give it a name. And then we double click on our simulation job. So like we did in the resistance boundary condition, we'll start by assigning a initial uh, flow rate at our inlet boundary, which is over here. For that, we go to set PC and we select the prescribed velocities BC type. Uh, I'm just going to use the default settings over here for now. And I'm going to load in a flow file that's 
uh, prescribed to this inlet boundary condition. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to go ahead and assign RCR boundary conditions to these two outlet vessels over here. So following um, a symmetric boundary condition for now, I'm going to start by assigning a RCR boundary condition here. And there's, as you can see, the three parameters we discussed, RP, C, and RD, uh, those three can be assigned over here. So let's say we set RP to be 100, capacitance to be 0 0.01, and RD to be 1,000. Uh, if, you, if you're wondering how we get these values, uh, I'll be discussing that in a second. Um, the distal pressure represents uh, the pressure downstream to this RCR element. It's a, a placeholder pressure to something we believe is physiological. For example, in this arterial system, distal to this um, arterial system, it's reasonable to assume a mean uh, venous pressure of some value. So typically a value of say 10 millimeters mercury in the venous system, you could similarly assume a distal uh, pressure according to whatever we believe is downstream of the distal vasculature, such as say the pulmonary system or so on. Um, so let's go ahead and set some value over here for the distal pressure. And I'm just going to go ahead and apply the same thing we did for the other cap. And Once we've applied this, we can hit save. And uh, what this does is it will create a simulation job for us. Um, over here, this SJB file, and that essentially stores uh, these conditions over here at the moment. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to go about choosing these values. So in order to do that, it's first important to um, know a little bit about what each of these parameters do. So let's start with um, looking at the effect of capacitance over here. So the, uh, the graphs I'm showing over here is the pressure at the outlet uh, of, our, um, of our vessel, at where we know the flow rate coming out of that vessel and entering into the RCR boundary condition. In the first graph, I'm holding RP and RD to be fixed, and I'm only varying capacitance. And when we increase capacitance going uh, one order of magnitude at a time, we can see the overall uh, pressure pulse decrease. Well, for all of these curves, the average pressure remains to be the same. So it's an average pressure of about 12 millimeters mercury, while all of our uh, pressure pulses uh, start to uh, decrease in magnitude, the difference between the max and the min pressure decreases. Uh, we can achieve a similar thing by holding capacitance to be the same and holding the sum of RP and RD to be the same, but just varying the ratio of the proximal to distal resistance. So over here, we have uh, a range of these ratios of proximal to distal resistances, and we can see that the overall pressure pulse can be uh, decreased if we decrease the uh, decrease the value of this ratio if we basically increase distal resistance while decreasing proximal resistance and maintaining the same sum 
uh, of RP to RD. So when we're tuning for a target pressure at an outlet, this is typically when we're given some data on what this target waveform would be. So this could be coming from CAT data that are clinically measured uh, in, uh, in and around those vessels, or this could be coming from some prior literature data where we know what the max pressure and min pressure would be, as well as the mean pressure would be at that particular outlet. We can, uh, based on this, compute a total resistance at that outlet uh, as a sum of proximal and distal resistance. And that's essentially going to be uh, the ratio of mean pressure divided by flow, uh, mean flow. With that, we have our first equation to be set. Then we have two more things to determine. We have uh, our capacitance and the ratio of proximal to distal resistance. Now, there's multiple ways to tune these two parameters. In fact, a lot of people pose this as a numerical optimization procedure. Uh, the key thing to note is increasing compliance or increasing capacitance as well as decreasing this RP to RD ratio ends up decreasing our pressure pulse. And one simplistic way to start approaching this problem manually, uh, sorry, yeah, one simplistic way to approach this problem manually is by fixing one of these parameters. So typically we fix the time constant that I was discussing below, the filling time, C times RD, and varying the other. So we either fix the time constant C times RD and vary the proximal to distal ratio, or we fix uh, the proximal to distal ratio and vary the time constant. Uh, good things to note over here is that usually the proximal to distal ratio is uh, less than one and sometimes it's much lesser than one so if you're getting a rp to rd that's around one or greater than one then that should probably mean that your uh, tuning is going a little far off and you should uh, maybe adjust your time constant on the other hand, your time constant is typically on the order of your cardiac cycle length. Uh, it's typically smaller than that, depending on the type of distal vasculature that you have, as well as healthier disease anatomy. Um, but it won't be uh, I, too large or too small compared to the time constant, um, unless there's something really anomalous going on. So these are good rules of thumb to have when adjusting or tuning your RCR outlets. Um, 